Hello captains of Armband. Welcome to another episode of Short Corners where we interview footballers, managers, coaches, analysts, scouts, directors and owners of various football clubs to bring the different aspects of the game closer to you. So if you're a football enthusiast just like me and love to learn from footballing personalities, make sure to subscribe to our channel. And today with us, we have Mr. Ravi Kedar, the head of business operations of ISL Club Odisha FC and you have heard about this position a lot in the real world in the movies and everything but in real world having a man like mr ravi kedar here is a pleasure for all of us so mr kedar how have you been thank you so much first of all i would like to thank amband for inviting me to this forum and of course i would like to welcome all the listeners of amband and i would like to thank the fans as well because you know they are the one who have been spreading the game so it's all the credit is all for the fans so i'm just privileged and i'm thankful to be here absolutely sir the fans play a big role in any football club's operation but sir we have a lot of questions for you and most of them have came from the fans only some we have planned but some are from the fans so we will just go into the talking points sir and starting with a very interesting one managing a football team involves coordinating various aspects from player training to match scheduling so could you take us through a typical day in your role my typical day to be very honest has changed over a, over the years like i started with a non football operation i would say wherein you know i was taking care of the players let's say you can call it a back end of the football wherein you no know, the players it was mostly let's say the complaint of the players which i was supposed to solve like their accommodation their flights their logistics and whenever the team is traveling away the flights the hotels in fact to a point where in we also have to take care of their families because the players are traveling most of the time they are traveling away they are practicing and also with the international players because their families are here some of the players and they are not from this country so you know it is an added responsibility where have wherein we have to treat them as guests of the country that's how i started with this football club that was like 4 5 years ago now and slowly i moved into football i after a year of doing this wherein the role was assistant football manager i moved to team manager of the odisha football club from the season which was like the first season in covid so again that was an all together different experience the role involved managing mostly like football wherein you manage the training sessions you speak to the coach you, you are just basically a bridge between the head coach the players and the management so whatever communication goes to the players it it mostly goes through you when you are a team manager so even if the coach has to communicate uh, to something to the team it goes to the team manager then obviously scheduling preparing for training preparing for match day match day is a totally different thing wherein you have to make sure that you don't break any rules the players don't break any rules because you know you are following what league and the federation have suggested so that also comes under you. after that i moved slowly to uh, business operations wherein first i moved to stadium operations last year i was mostly doing stadium operations wherein it is more about like organizing home matches taking care of uh, the home matches starting from a single thing like a water supply to any of the biggest thing wherein security is involved wherein other logistics involved flood lights diesel lot of different things are involved so i basically moved into stadium operations now over the last 2 years my role has i have moved more into business operations wherein i am still let's say like taking care of the stadium i have people working under me who take care of the stadium but the, the accountability stops with me again but i have also moved into commercials which is more like the start of the season where we are where when we are looking for different sponsors different partnerships then i have also moved into media and community so basically it's it's a mix of everything uh, if you have to term it like we can term it like a corporate startup where you know the culture is like where the rules are on paper it might be defined but on ground we have to in, get involved in basically everything i agree with this quote of yours that you said last year that we aim to organize a series of engaging events in educational institutions to raise awareness and impart knowledge about the significance of sports as you just said could you elaborate on how you engage with the local community and the fans to build a strong fan base for the club and i will just add this one point odisha fc from last season to this season maybe they are the 
they are the only team with this much amount of fan from last season this is steep there is an exponential curve of rise in terms of fan base and the activities because we run youtube here we know there are tons of orange fc fans which were not even the fan last season but with the team's brilliant performance as well as the off the field activities they have one of the most vibrant fan bases currently in indian football so how is this possible and how did you made it possible you know i would like to take all the credit and say we have done a lot of community and you have done a lot of things to get the fans but the truth is the results always help so i would say it's a mix of doing on ground activities and of course the results also so you can see how the how good the team is doing how good the women's team is doing so obviously that has helped but yeah as i said no we we, we try to why i said that we are trying to organize more events in educational institution is because just because purely because of the age because i remember like when i was a student in in my like graduation and post graduation that was the time when you know you start looking at following teams following sports that's that's the age you build your fan base from obviously because the thing is if you build fan base from that that age they will stay with you for a long time so it's not like we don't want to build fans who are like let's say 40 or 45 years old we still want to you know interact with them but why we go to educational institutes we want to go to educational institutes is because you see the dynamics of education in india is changing as well more and more colleges more and more school even the governments are focusing more on sports and you can't have a better example than odisha government in that, in that terms so that's why we also want to focus on the education institutes then also we want to focus on local communities you know which which we can sports can help them sports can sports is something which is i would say any any like for any part any section of society it's open it's not limited to let's say the richest or let's say some particular part of the society it's open to everyone and even if you are not playing professionally and half an hour or an hour of football on any day gives you a joy which is unmatched at odisha we see a constant progress we see a constant progression from this level to this the constant commitment from the management from moving to a better place last season we finished 6th this season we have played in the afc cup we have won the super cup last season with an indian coach and a very good core this season we have moved on to the top 4 we are giving a good competition we moved on to the afc cup knockouts so there is a constant progression and there is a beautiful style of play as well with sergio labera so one of the big things why i think the fans are so happy is because of the fact they know that the management are taking care of the things and they have only one thing in mind they want to support it, like support the club whole heartedly no that that that's our aim as well no to it's not like within a year we want to become a top club or let's say something like a european club or a you know some big club but obviously what we we our focus is on every year we should do more than what we have done last year so that's our that's our approach no every year we want to take we might have to take one step backward but we want to take two steps forward so our approach is step by step we want to be there and we want to grow organically we don't want to you know wherein wherein we have one season which looks very good everything is good and suddenly next season there is nothing so that's our approach that's that's the approach of the owners that's the approach of the management last season as you said for example women's team we started no we started last season everyone said that you guys are the favorite odisha fc is the favorite in women's team but as as as, as internally if you ask me we had the same discussion this is our first year obviously on the field we want to do as better as we can we want to win everything even in women's team but our approach was never like if we don't win first season we'll just stop the team or we'll just not focus on the women's team we still the vision is still there we have an opportunity to win it tomorrow if we win nothing like it if we don't win we are still focused on the same things we were focused on the process as long as the process is good we are pretty sure that the results will come eventually it will come same is the approach with the even like in terms of let's say training and like other facilities which we provide to our women's team we anyone is free to come and look at them they are as equal as we can give as equal to like say men's team obviously there are some constraints in terms of the financials but we try to give them similar setup like which we give to the men's team the training grounds are same the facilities are same the stadium we try to keep we try to i think out of six matches we have played three in kalinga itself so as long as it's possible we try to give them the same thing how do you approach ticket sales and match the experiences to attract more supporters to the stadium 
because from last season to this season there is a huge difference in terms of the fans entering the stadium the pop, the fan base has as i said has been on an exponential curve in terms of rise again like i can't take the full credit here but obviously the results have helped but yeah the approach has been since last year the approach has been no last year we didn't concentrate on earning even now we are not earning anything out of the tickets so we knew that at least it's not the like next 5 years i don't think we are we will be able to earn anything out of the ticketing so our focus was bringing the fans in the stadium first of all then we can think about the ticketing last year we were i mean to be very honest we were handing out a lot of complimentary tickets as well wherein we want them to come in have experience and then probably look at 2 3 years and then they'll start buying the ticket that was the process that was the thought behind the process and to be very honest it is it, you can see a small increase in terms of people buying the ticket as well from last year the sale was very low this year the sale has increased it's not increased drastically but still there is an increase so my point is last year we try try to hand out as many tickets as possible to people to different sections of let's say society colleges you know wherein they come for the they come for the event wherein they know there is an event going on there are lights there is music there is some game happening odisha is playing odisha might win they are playing against some other state let's beat that state they came in for this but thankfully you know at kalinga our team has always been playing good and we have had some really exciting matches i remember last year we had a match with chennai wherein we conceded in like let's say 80 85 minutes and then nanda scored in injury time so these kind of experiences when you are coming first time for the stadium and you get such an exciting match you obviously want to come again to the see the stadium you start liking the sport then you go back probably watch the next time if you are not able to come you try to watch it on tv and then you know try to tell your friends i went to this stadium this is really nice nice experience the games are really exciting this is how football goes out these are the rules you score this is offside such kind of things you know where our focus is building on first time fans so the approach for stadium and uh, ticket sales has been same we want to get more and more new people then of course for example if you see this season we have started with fan parks as well so we obviously we have not done fan parks for every game we have to strategically place our fan parks wherein we felt that this is the match where we will get the maximum crowd so we have done fan parks which usually starts one and a half hour before the game wherein you have different different like games it's, it's kind of an entertainment park wherein even when you come with your family you have few activities for your kids as well then you have few games football games as well as non football games as well as i said because we don't want to restrict our public to only football audience we want to engage everyone who is like interested into sports interested into going out basically basically someone who sees coming to a stadium as a leisure activity as well because we know that these guys are the guys down the years four five down the years will build will be the guys who will be passionate fans of the club today they might not have the same passion they, but do they have they do have the passion for the state so that passion for the state for sports we want to convert into the passion for the football and passion for odisha FC. that's our basic thing to you know our outlook to how to get tickets and match tickets can you share a bit of insight into the financial aspect of running a football club and how you balance the revenue generation with maintaining a competitive team because we need a balance between those two <laughs> that's that's the you know billion dollar question for all the clubs i would say so like how do you manage your finances you no know? because i mean we can't hide behind the fact that clubs are making losses clubs are losing a huge amount of money all the clubs not just our club everyone is losing money but the focus is obviously on at like to grow the football and at some point the football with clubs will start breaking even and then probably start earning money which is like which is even if you see IPL it took them 2 3 years to break even and then start earning money but that is obviously because it's cricket it took them only 2 3 years but because for us it's a, it's football which is still in initial stages in terms of like fan growth we are still looking at growing every year at the same time as you said no we also have to make a competitive team so that that again depends on the you know the first step of the making a team which is basically right from finding the right staff finding the right coaches and if 
and trusting them you know with 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 what you want with your philosophy if your if your coaches know that this is what the club is trying to do this is what the club wants from them they will also understand that limitations of the club as well and they'll try to get in the players which are not very expensive but good enough and then you have to look at the indian players as well it's not only like you get very good six foreign players and if you don't have good indian players then you are going to be a very good team so it has to be a balance of both the things and then third term is thing is that you have to trust your coaches once you have your coaches in you have to trust them you know sometimes you might think that this player is not good enough or you might think that this is very expensive or not but if you if you trust your coaches you have to bring the players which are like which the player wants and at the same time as i said no if you want if you want to talk about the long term development how you are going to balance these things out the long term solution is only one which is developing your own players that's that's the only solution no you have to look at your youth you have to look at your grassroots you have to try to improve that that's the only solution long term if you go you can't keep buying players and players and players every season and trying to make a team i mean some of the clubs can but not every club can do that so in long term even even if you see any of the clubs which are buying good players which you might feel for example you might think mohan bagan and mumbai have lot of money they can buy any player but even they are like looking at young players they are also trying to make new players on on the cream if you see only the cream and you only see the isl you might think that they are just buying the best players and winning the trophies it's not like that their concentration if you see the amount of game time they are giving to young players you take mumbai or you take mohan bagan it's unbelievable it's not like the only the top players are playing so at the same time as i said every club's focus for long term sustainability is that developing young players and obviously foreigners you see when the league started the clubs were only looking at marquee players where you bring some big players like luis garcia and all who bring some visibility to the football club and who might give you like 30 40 minutes or who might give you 5 6 games in the season but now the clubs are totally moved away from that now clubs then started to look at players who are who will give you like full 90 minutes who will play throughout the season and who might be let's say 30 31 32 years of age who might be ending their career and might look to come to indian league but now even recently like last two three years that is also changing the foreign players clubs are also looking at young foreign players not only players who are like at the prime of their age so this is basically the clubs are taking risk when when you have a player who is 23 24 who is doing well in some other league might be very good in this league or might not so there there is some risk taking involved as well and when when i talk about financial aspects you know we look at obviously the main major income that comes in is through either sponsorship or tv rights so these are the two aspects we look at to try to increase every day you know every year we want to give more visibility more power to in, in hands of the sponsors so that you know they also feel value and wherein again it boils down to building a community the over like locals over your local region over your local state because the sponsor is also see if i want to get a visibility in tv if i want to get visibility on ground i can simply put an ad on tv as well you know i'll pay some big money put an ad on tv and that get that visibility but what i wouldn't get is the association with a sports team association with your local sports team so sponsors are also looking that and that is the reason we are trying to build that where where in our focus is on fans and communities if we are able to build that i'm sure the sponsors will come i'm sure the fans will come and as i said no in no time foreign clubs will look to associate with indian clubs would look to partner with indian clubs and we will obviously get that more let's say visibility as well. it is a challenge i would say managing financial is big challenge wherein we are you you i know sometimes fans would think like why can't we get this why can't we do that why can't we get some big players and all that but as i said no you also have to look at the owners who are really passionate like if if i had that kind of money would i be you know ready to make such losses every year some of them might say yes but most of them will say no but they are still doing it year after year even though they know there are huge losses to be incurred because they also want they also want to you know they also see an in india wherein football will thrive wherein we'll have international football wherein 
people from India, football footballers from India will be playing in top leagues, and that top league could be one of the league in India as well. So that's the aim. It will take some time for sure, but I think as of now I can say the clubs are in the right direction. We have some big challenges wherein, but like my personal opinion is, we need more coordination among the different stakeholders, be, be it the club management, be be it the other clubs like the clubs themselves, then be it the federation, be it the league. The more we collaborate, the more better it will be for for the Indian football. You might have seen like this this year also, you no. Know, there was a big issue wherein there was a gap of understanding between the national team and the clubs. You know, wherein the national team thought that we need more time, then the club thought that we can't really. Because see, you have to reach an reach a mutual agreement. Because you might think that let's give more time to national team and just forget the league itself. That is also not possible. Because if in fact you see the January gap has somewhat not helped the league. The, 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 the league has been divided into two different phases. So, at the same time, I don't want to say that we don't, we can't give any time to national team. No, national team is equally important if we want to take the sports forward. Because if the na national team does well, the fans will come. You you seen, for example, other sports you see, like badminton or let's say tennis or let's say the newest sport javelin throw. Nobody knew. Nobody knew how javelin throw works. What kind of sport is this? A kind of sports or not? It's a leisure activity. It's a time pass activity. But since like Indian players started winning medals at the international stages, these sports have grown. You see badminton after Sanya Nehwal and uh, Sindhu. It has grown exponentially. You know, people of let's say parents want their kids to go and practice for uh, badminton as well. So doing nationally is always going to help the clubs as well. Like it's going to help the football in general. So that's 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 what I say. There has to be a collaboration among everyone. What do you think are the key challenges that you have encountered, and how have you overcome them? Because we know, because right now in Indian football the challenges are more, the solutions are less actually. Yeah, of course, no challenges. I would say because I'm more into let's say business side of the football club, not in more in like towards the football side. So I would talk about those kind of challenges, wherein, as I said, when I talk about business, the challenge, the biggest challenge is to, you know, to make them believe that there is some kind of benefit in sponsoring or in associating with the football team for a good amount. Like obviously, if you want to ask for a small amount, you'll say, okay, take the amount, I'll get the association with the club, no problem. But if you want to, you know, as I, as you were talking about financially, Compatibility. If you want to get really good sponsors who are with you for a long time, you have to make them believe that there is something in this. Because most of the times they will ask, okay, and see, the first of all, most of the sponsors who are not into sports or who are into sports but majorly into cricket, when you approach them, they would usually feel like it's it's a football club. It might be you know not exactly a college team, but they somehow feel like it's a college team or it's a football team who are, you know, kids are getting together and running a team. Okay, you might be playing on TV, but still they don't feel like, because they have not never heard about it, they never feel like it's a professional league wherein it, it's, so basically, I'm sure I, I have to use this and a lot of other uh, clubs, uh, staff might have to use this language, wherein you tell them that it's an equivalent of IPM. It's a football equivalent of, equivalent of IPM. So that's the kind of stage we are in. We have to define it in terms of when you have to equate with IPL. But then again, see, in my in my opinion, it's even better than IPL. Not in terms of fan engagement, or not in terms of let's say money or professionalism. They are way better. But in terms of potential, and why would I say this is because football runs, let's say, it used to be three four months. Now it became six seven months. Now it's almost throughout the year. If you see only maybe May. And June would be the year where there will be no football. You might have international football, there will, there will not be much club football. So the league is actually it's, it's run throughout the year. The football is throughout the year, unlike IPL, which comes, let's say, for two months. Two or three months. Yeah, that two or three months. months. So the potential for sponsor is huge as well. Mm. Obviously, the numbers are not there right now. But in terms of potential, it's much bigger than IPL. It can grow to a... Not if not in 10 years, 15 years, maybe 20 years, it can grow to similar levels of IPL as well.
so now moving on to the final questions given your diverse background spanning from demand planning at lg electronics to football operations at odisha fc what advice would you offer to the individuals aspiring to navigate across different industries and roles especially in terms of skill development and career progression see in terms of my diverse background like i obviously liked or let's say was not following indian football from let's say very young age but i liked football i liked playing football for from very young age even in my school when people want to play cricket i i as i said i liked cricket as well but i i used to wish sometimes that if i'm playing cricket today tomorrow let's play football but majority of the people wanted to play cricket so i couldn't then i because football you need at least three four guys to play so i liked football from the start i wanted to at after doing my graduation and working 3 4 years in a corporate job i wanted to move to a football setup but before i saw the setup was not there let's be very honest in terms of not, not i'm let's forget about how much ISL has helped Indian football or in, in to grow or football team to grow or footballers to grow. If we are talking purely from staff aspect, it has helped. It has been a huge change for people working in football. So at that time, I was in two minds: should I completely go into football or should I not? In fact, I remember before I started my MBA, it was at, I was at a point wherein I was thinking I should not do an MBA and I insisted if I should do two three years in a small job in a football and learn something and then i can move forward but you, you know eventually i guess that's the case with most of the people that you have to think long term about yourself and then i decided to do an mba then i joined an multinational company like lg and i was working with lg as a demand planner during my the whole journey where i you know after completing my post graduation in fact i very early in my career i start thought of like moving to football i thought that i have corporate experience on my side so why not use the same experience in terms of going into a football club you know and i'll tell you one thing as you move up the ladder in any organization it it becomes less about let's say technical skills or let's say i am an engineer i can do only engineering work it becomes more about people management it's more about how can you you make sure that people work and how can you make sure things are done and how can you make sure that the staff is motivated to do those things it's mostly that you go across any organization the higher you go that that's how it works so it it was not like i was more into an engineering or a management the management obviously student can go anywhere that that's how it is you and in fact in india i would say engineers can go anywhere as well that's how it is so you do engineering you can go and join any organization obviously you cannot do something technical but non technical you can do and initially you might feel like what am i going to do in a football club because i remember my parents asking me like do you play football in, 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 in before joining odisha i joined vinava punjab like i league club in chandigarh mm-hmm. so when i joined i left my job in uh, lg obviously i had to take a huge pay cut so obviously my parents were concerned and then, then they asked like will you, are you going to play i said no then they asked are you going to coach i said no then they were like what are you, what else are you going to do if you are not playing if you are not coaching what else is there to do in a football club <laughs> so then you know that kind of like social stigma people, i guess yeah people, they're, they're still there maybe probably in some people still still there like what are there's no career in football either you become a footballer or a coach or there's nothing else what else can you do so that i would like to like let people know that that's not there there's, there's a huge potential of growing in indian football as well in terms of staff as well it the only difference would be from a corporate is it might it might not come instantly like when you work in a corporate you work for 2 years you change a job you might get 30 40% increment you get a very good position and if you are good enough see that thing is clear you have to be good enough if you are in corporate or anywhere you have to be good If you are good enough in corporate, within five six years you can climb the ladder. You can be sitting at a position where you are a vice president or something like that. It's fast. I agree. In football, it might not be that fast, but the advantage is if you are good enough, you can grow in any direction. Because at the same time, as I said, no, there are only a limited number of people working in football. Only a limited number of people who are in, who have experience in working for a football club. So that experience nobody can take away from. 
especially if you, for people who are looking to join football i would say that if you think this is for you please you don't think twice about it and more of it i would like to say about people who are already in football because i see a lot of people who have worked in football for let's say 3 4 5 years and then they leave then they either move to cricket or they move all together to corporate they think that this not working there's no money but i would like to tell them as well like personally i see huge potential in football staff as well like football operations as well in terms of working for a football club as well because you like it like you take it or not it is going to grow the audience is there the football grows or not the footballing landscape will grow for sure and yeah. once football grows because football is not a na- game played by 16 nations it's mm-hmm. a game played by 200 nations the opportunities are unlimited, unlimited. and once an indian football enters the european pitch beat beat any of the top 5 leagues i'm not saying premier league or la liga even in the portuguese league or any so league in, in the craze will be crazy see in terms of being a, like a like like a set up wherein people are working like the workforce i would say indian workforce if you see is very talented and i'm not talking about football i'm talking about any field and it's extremely hard working which you don't get everywhere so if you see all the countries all the big countries there in us uk or european countries non football it or even doctors if you see medical you will see a huge amount of indians working over there because they understand the potential of indian workforce the same is going to come through football also once the football grows obviously football has to grow then people you know, in fact since you are talking about this when we went to afc for the draw this season we went for the knockout stages draw we went for the group stages draw we have been interacting with them constantly throughout you could see that already there are people like there are indians in working for the world organization the i remember last time also when i went to afc with uh, minerva punjab as well 5 years ago i remember the head of uh, legal department was indian the head of media department was indian the operations the second to the head was indian so lot of indians are already in these kind of organizations even if you see i'm sure like even if you see fifa or like uefa or all you will find indians even if you follow european uh, football you will find like in terms of let's say broadcasting in terms of tv broadcasting you would find indian origin people working there as well so i'm sure like this potential people already know the outsiders who are like huge leagues they know that potential of indian workforce is huge what we are lacking as of now is direct experience in terms of football management which is going to come once you know you work for for some time in football so captains that was all for today we need to end our session here thanks mr ravi for being with us today and to all of our viewers thanks a lot for tuning in and make sure to subscribe to our channel for more such podcasts like this and until then it's goodbye from ambed